tutti. Hi everyone, I'm Fabio Nuti and I'm a keyboard tech. A lay person might wonder, what does a keyboard tech do? He, she is someone who puts the artist he works for at ease, making the artist comfortable both in terms of the technical aspect and the psychological aspect. I work for Vasco Rossi. For those who do not know him, he is one of the best known rock artists in Italy. With a career of over 40 years, And again, this year, in his 2022 tour, Vasco Rossi performed 12 live shows for a total of over 700,000 tickets sold, a huge number. He has an 11-piece band, Matt Logg on drums, Claudio Gallo Golinelli and Andrea Torresani on bass, Steph Burns on guitars, Vince Pestano is artistic director, Frank Namola sings backing vocals and does sequence programming. Backing vocals and percussion from Beatrice Antolini. And this year, he introduced a brass section with Andrea Ferrario on sax, Tiziano Bianchi on trumpet, and Roberto Solomando on trombones. Last but not least is Alberto Rocchetti on keyboards, the artist I work with for whom I am a keyboard tech. My goal is to give the artist the best possible conditions under which to work, to be comfortable, and to play, in the case of Alberto Rocchetti, with tranquility. That task is accomplished working in three different phases. Pre-production, rehearsals, and the live show. In the pre-production stage, the artist tells me all the sounds he wants to use and the instruments he wants to play his parts. I figure out the programming that I will do in Camelot. And then, during the rehearsals, I can fine-tune all the programming done during pre-production. Then, there are the rehearsals, where we fine-tune the sounds and the levels of the parts to then be ready to face the most important part, a live show. These steps of pre-production and then rehearsals are done to ensure that the live show goes well, without any kind of problem, because that is the main goal. During the live show, I take care of managing things, including switching the sounds of Alberto Rocchetti's hardware keyboards. I also handle scene changes for the mixer that controls the levels of the various keyboards. So I control all live management of the programming, both audio and MIDI, as well as ensure that the whole show proceeds without errors. Before the show, I take care to check that every piece of hardware, its routing and every detail, is in place and working correctly. First of all, I check all the connections, what is feeding what, the MIDI cables, audio cables, and cabling that goes from the keyboards to the preamps and to my mixer. Every single connection and every single process is carefully checked so that the artist can go up on stage focused because he is sure that everything is working. Camelot helps me thanks to its flexibility, which I discovered right away and really appreciated. Alberto uses a heterogeneous hardware setup with simple configurations when he uses the keyboards individually, like a piano sound, a pad, or strings. But the great advantage of Camelot is that, thanks to its routing, it's possible to layer the piano together with strings and a pad. So we can create some very rich sounds in a scene and maybe in the next scene, totally changing the routing. In one scene, you can layer a CP1, CP88, Integra, and Nord Rack. And in the next scene, play the CP1 layered with CP88 and Montage. So each scene can have a completely different sound. And this is a huge advantage in a live context. But another advantage I found during the rehearsal phase is if the artist asks for a last minute edit to the sounds. Sometimes you need to make immediate edits and thanks to Camelot's smart map, these changes become very simple and intuitive to execute. And everything is worked out in a short time because you just have to select a preset from a smart map. 
This is a huge advantage over the software I was using previously. Before, in fact, I used to print a sheet on which I had all the program changes. And when I was asked to change a preset, I was forced to work under pressure looking for the correct program change and then jumping back into programming. It was a time-consuming method, time that has now been reduced thanks to Camelot's smart maps. One of the most important aspects of live shows, as I teach during my courses, is having backup plans. For example, this year, in addition to the standard plan that included all the machines having local controls switched off with full MIDI management by Camelot, I had also provided an alternative plan in case of an unreliable MIDI connection. This plan B used a local control on configuration connecting the device's controllers to their internal sound generators. Another backup plan, to be used in the event of a hardware device failure, involved the use of software plugins that would replace the specific missing timbre from the failed device. These were just a few examples of my plans B. Obviously, many others have been designed to solve any predictable problem in a live show such as the failure of an instrument or a cable. It is necessary to be very quick in understanding what the problem is and in acting as soon as possible. The ultimate goal must always be to keep the artist calm and not make him worry about any problem that might arise during a show, to keep him focused only on his performance and on the execution of his parts. The stack in the center of Alberto's setup has a Nord Lead, a Nord Electro 5, and a Yamaha CP1. The stack on the right has an Access Virus, a Yamaha Montage 7, and a Yamaha CP88. The stack on the left has a Nord Rack, a Roland Integra 7, and a Nord Wave. MIDI in and MIDI out for each device are connected to an iConnectivity MIDI card using 5-pin DIN MIDI cables. The iConnectivity card is connected via USB to the computer, which is running Camelot to manage MIDI routing, change sounds, and handle the various layers. Audio for all the instruments is sent to a preamp rack, which is connected digitally to a Behringer X32 mixer, where the instrument audio feeds are divided into three subgroups. Piano bus, which contains CP1 and CP88 layered together for the piano sound. Organ bus, which contains the Nord Electro 5 for Hammond organ emulation. And K-Mix bus, which contains Nord lead, Montage 7, Access Virus, Nord Wave, Nord Rack, and Integra 7, which are used for pads, leads, strings, etc. These three subgroups are then sent to a splitter from which the signals are routed to the front of house mix engineer and the monitor mixer. The X32 is connected via USB to the computer where Camelot manages its volumes and scene changes. As for MIDI connections, I used standard 5-pin DIN MIDI cables for everything. For convenience, I could have also used USB cables because we know that, unfortunately, to both transmit and receive using standard MIDI cables, I have to use two cables, while with the USB solution, I would have used only one. But for safety, I have always used standard MIDI cables so that I could use longer cables, and in case of a cable failure, I always have to try to minimize spare parts. So, rather than having both standard MIDI cables, which are mandatory for older instruments, and USB cables as spare parts for MIDI connections, I prefer to have only standard MIDI cables. Now let's move to the station behind me to see how the programming was handled in Camelot. 
Here, we have recreated the 2022 Tor keyboard rig in a smaller configuration for demonstration purposes. As we said previously, our work can be divided into three phases. Pre-production, rehearsals, and showtime. Let's have a look at what we did for pre-production. Alberto, the artist, after receiving the set list from show management, decides on the hardware instrument rig and discusses with me his overall vision for the sounds and the instrument routing. Then, I dive into Camelot to start building and programming everything. Now, let's take a look at the pre-production programming in Camelot. The first thing I do, after receiving direction from the artist, is to build a scene that I will use as a master template. This scene has a basic configuration and routing that allows me to connect all the instruments in use during the tour and apply the routing and preset selection variations needed for each song. This example shows how I build this template scene. I have already added most of the instruments, but I will complete this one with you to show you how I usually work. In this scene, we have one layer for each keyboard controller and one hardware item, the small boxes, for each tone generator or instrument. So, each keyboard instrument or synth has its keyboard, controller, and tone generator connected in one layer because they are all set to local control off. I can then move the items to other layers in Camelot to create different routings and to combine and layer sounds from multiple sound generators. Now I'm showing a simple programming action to add the Yamaha CP1 layer. This is the main keyboard controller used during the show. It can control everything from a single solo piano sound to a complex sound made by combining many instruments from the rig. I made the new layer, I rename it, change color, and drag it on top because I want to keep it as the most accessible and visible, considering that it is the most important instrument in the rig. To make the CP1 the input controller, let's select it from the layer's MIDI inputs. Then, let's add the items on this layer to other tone generators. I can just follow a simple wizard to browse all the items available. Let's press ahead and select hardware devices. We choose Yamaha, the Yamaha brand, and then let's look for the CP1. Here it is, and at the end, let's select the MIDI port related to the CP1. Once that is selected, that layer is all set. The last thing I do is turn off the default CC11 level control knob, because on tour, we manage the keyboard mix and levels in a digital mixer by recalling a dedicated configuration scene which sends a program change from Camelot to the mixer. Now, we have created the basic local control off configuration. If you want to play another instrument from the CP1, the only thing you need to do is add another instrument item to the same CP1 layer. For example, let's add a Roland Integra 7. I select the preset I want to load on the Integra 7, and then I disable the CC11 knob for this item as well. This is the starting point that allows me to quickly select the sound preset from the smart maps and create routings for each song of the set list. So, for example, I can drag and drop the Yamaha montage item here to add it to the CP1 layer and make an even more complex sound combining the CP1, Integra 7, and montage tone generators. This is the first song of the show I built in Camelot. It has a different scene to cover the intro medley. Each scene calls a different preset on each of the instruments, different routing, and the dedicated mix is recalled by switching the digital mixer scenes from Camelot with exactly the same approach used for other instruments. So we use a dedicated layer without MIDI input, of course, working with the MIDI item representing the digital mixer in the same way as one of the tone generators. 
Now we are ready to face rehearsals. Let's see what we usually do in Camelot during this phase. During rehearsals, I support the artist by muting instruments or switching sound presets on the devices to adjust or apply changes to the draft set list made during pre-production. This is normal, especially to adapt the keyboard sound to blend with the other band instruments or to address artistic requests. We also can change the routing to create different instrument combinations and get new sounds. And this is really faster and easier than before when I was using the MIDI implementation charts of all the hardware devices and mapping them into another piece of software. Another important use of this master scene is the capability to check if all instruments are really set to local control off. You know that some devices do not save the state of local control, and when you reboot them, they reset to local control on. So I have a test scene with all instruments and layers connected, but transposed down one semitone. In this case, if one instrument is mistakenly still in local control on, when I play the instrument's keyboard, I can immediately hear a dissonant tone generated by two notes playing at the same time, with a one semitone shift. The local note, not transposed, and the note played through Camelot's MIDI loop. This trick is very useful, for example, with the Access Virus, which I need to set the local control off every time it gets turned on. So the use of this scene, in combination with using the layer virtual keyboard for a line check, is fundamental for testing before the rehearsals and, of course, before the show. I do an audio and MIDI line check to be sure that all MIDI connections are working properly and the devices are set in the correct way, as well as that the audio signal is flowing as expected. With everything all set after the rehearsal phase, it's at the point where I am ready for the show. So I create a remote control mapping that facilitates my job by assigning to a control surface the main Camelot action buttons, like song switch, scene switch, timeline play stop, and, of course, the panic button. Let's take a look at how I did that in Camelot. Just click on the settings cog icon in the footer. Then select remote control, MIDI, from by, and if you haven't done so previously, create a controller with the plus button below. Then go click on the dot 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 menu. Now let's search the actions list for the mapping for previous scene, press Learn, and then press or move the controller to acquire the incoming MIDI message to map. It's the same story for next scene and the other actions we want on buttons, panic, and so on. Now that the remote controls have been mapped, I can use the X-Touch control surface during the show to switch scenes or songs without the need to touch the mouse or keyboard. And last but not least, when I want to automate a scene switch, I can also use the timeline for that. In this case, when the song is performed following a metronome, I can press play on the timeline and load the scene at the right time without the need for manual action. I hope you liked this video. See you on stage.